Hi there, welcome to NEP Invest. One of the things we should be doing, maybe not every day, maybe not even every week, but definitely every so often, is assessing our buys, trades, sells, all those sort of things. And the reason it's really healthy to do that is it can improve how we invest in the future. So I'm always assessing my trade. Sometimes I assess uh, my trades on a daily basis, particularly when I've just bought into a company. The other thing I am trying to do a little bit more now is to assess my sales. A lot of times when I sell out of a company, I just completely forget about that company moving forward. And I want to see or be able to see whether those sell decisions have paid off or whether I can improve my selling decisions. So I think it's very important to be able to do that as well because in a way, the selling decision is the hardest decision we have to make as investors. So in this video today, I'm going to assess a few trades I have made over the past two years. This is the second video I've done in this series. And in the first video, which I did release on March the 14th, I looked at these seven companies. Metro Mining, Lark Distillery, NRW, Mount Gibson, Babcor, West African Resources, and Smart Group. I have not sold out of any of these companies over the past three weeks since I did that video. In fact, a few of these companies' share price have gone up, particularly Metro Mining, West African Resources, Mount Gibson Iron as well. NRW Holding share price has gone down. So I'm paying a little bit of a closer look to share price action of that company. Bepcor share price going sort of sideways. Lark Distillery share price has recovered, uh, thankfully. And I really want to hold those shares in that company for the long term. So that's what we, that's what I, those are the companies I covered in the previous video. Now I will do an update to that video in the next few months just to see how these companies' share price have been traveling. Now, the six companies I'll be featuring in today's video include New Farm, Service Stream, Telstra, John's Ling Group, Pack Gold, and South 32. So this does include a company I've held for about 20 months. It is my longest holding uh, using this strategy. I also bought into Blue Scope still about the same time, but I have taken my profits in that company. I have used this strategy in the past, this um, sort of a short-term sentiment strategy in the past over a short period of time. For instance, Fortescue Metals, I used this about three or four years ago when the share price was $3. I sold, up, sold out way too quick. I did learn my lesson. So when I ever see a share price rising on a company I do own in a nice, well-developed uptrend, I want to maintain a holding of that company as long as possible. That's definitely happening with South 32. Now, for these companies, the share price is up from when I bought. Two of these companies, share price is down. And in fact, I have sold out of one of these companies. We'll get to that when I talk about that individual company later in the video. First company I want to talk about is New Farm. Now, I was a little bit late to the party with this company. And this is me trying to rid myself of biases or prejudices against companies. I definitely had a bit of a bias against New Farm simply because it is an agricultural company and the breakout in the share price actually happened towards the start of February and it took me almost two months to actually take a position when I did see this breakout as a confirmation. So I bought into New Farm on March the 22nd at $6.01. Currently it is at $6.22. A lot of positive sentiment behind this company lot of good tailwinds behind this company as well. And that's why the share price has really taken off over the past three months. In each of these examples, I'll try to talk about something I have learned about my trade, either a successful learning, well, not maybe not a successful learning, but something I have taken away that I can use in the future. For instance, in New Farm, it was all about sort of exercising, not exercising, exorcising my biases, trying to take the emotion out of any decision making. And I do think technical analysis can help you do that. In fact, probably the best way to do technical analysis 
is actually not know anything about the company, just look at the chart and determine whether it is a breakout or there is good positive momentum behind the company just based off the chart without even looking at what company it is. Now, ServiceStream is the next company on this list. Now, a lot of negative sentiment behind this company for a long time. We had seen share price dive a fair bit, but when this company did release the half year results, the market absolutely loved it. And there was a breakout on that day or potential breakout anyway. Now, I did not buy on that particular day or even the subsequent three days when we did see the share price move even higher. Even during the pullback, we did see a little brief, bull, little brief pullback from about 98 cents down to 90 cents. That would have been the ideal time because this was a breakout in the share price for service trade and it has kept on rising. I bought a few days later after that little dip at 95 cents on March the 14th, and the share price has kept on rising. There is a little bit of resistance level at around about $1, $1.02, and the share price has hovered around that the last few days. On the last trading day, share price actually fell below that new support level, but it was on fairly low volume. In the last three days, in fact, the last three days, uh, even though share price has dropped from about $1.08 to $1.02, it's been on lower, lowering volume. That's actually a good sign that there's not a lot of sellers out there who want to take profits. The other thing I like about Service Stream is the share price right now is at a multi-month high. So I'm looking for at least six-month high in the share price. The last time the share price was this high was way back in, two, in July of 2021. And the share price only reached this point for a very brief period of time before we saw the share price fall to its long-term low which was around about 74 cents. So a lot of positive center behind service stream. And the other thing I really liked about uh, the reason or the catalyst behind this uh, breakout in the share price, it was based off their half yearly results. It was based off financial numbers. And I find that any sort of catalyst behind a breakout is most likely to be successful when it's on the back of good financial news. And that's what we've seen with service stream. So the only thing I could have done differently with this company or this trade was to buy on the dip. I decided to just wait for confirmation that that was a dip. And that's why I did buy in at a slightly higher price than I could have. And really, when I'm saying a slightly higher price, I'm talking about maybe 5% lower from when I bought in. Now onto Telstra. And to be frank with you, I saw this company share price move into an uptrend uh, well over one year ago, but I was very resistant of taking a position in Telstra just because the overall um, sentiment in this company. Uh, in fact, when you think about Telstra, you should not be thinking about growth. This company has not really grown over the last 10 to 15 years, but there are two things that made me take a position. The share price wasn't an uptrend, and I had seen increase talking about this company from fund managers. I had seen a lot of buy recommendations. And when I see increasing buy recommendations, that means the fund managers are getting more excited. And that means they're the ones driving up their share price. So a nice, well-developed uptrend. I decided to buy in on a little dip at around $4.15. Now that was just shy of the high in the share price of this company, which was $4.30 two weeks after I bought in. And then the share price tanked, went from $4.30 all the way to $3.85 in two weeks. And that was the end of the, down, of the uptrend because the uptrend, which is portrayed by that sloping upward line, the share price actually went below that and stayed below that. So the uptrend had come to an end and that should have been my sell signal. For some reason, I maintained a holding in this company, but I have sold out of Telstra recently because the uptrend, the whole reason I bought into this company has been broken. And when your thesis of buying into a company is broken, that's when you should decide to sell out. So I've decided to sell out of Telstra at $3.93, which is a little bit lower from when I bought in, but that's okay. It's not a massive loss. And my gains I've seen in other companies far outweigh the loss in this one trade I did make. Now on to South 32, which is at this point in time, my longest holding in this portfolio using this strategy, a short-term sentiment strategy. But even though I'm talking about short-term sentiment, sometimes, and my hope is, 
that some are holding is using this strategy in this portfolio will be multi-year. I'm talking about three, four, five years. Now, before I started using this strategy, there would be no way I would have bought into South 32 or any other mining companies. I was beholden to the reasoning from a lot of professionals out there that you should never buy into mining companies because they are price takers. But sometimes there is a lot of positive momentum behind these mining companies. Sometimes when the commodity price is in an uptrend, that's when you do take a position in the company. And sometimes when you're at the bottom of the, of the commodity cycle, that is another good time to possibly think about taking a position, particularly when the share price of a company you've been following moves in into an uptrend, particularly when the share price moves into an uptrend coincides with the commodity price moving into an uptrend as well. Now, one of the reasons I bought it to South 32 was simply because it looked like the share price might be moving into an uptrend. I needed confirmation because I was holding to onto South 32 shares for about three or four months before we had confirmation of a breakout in the share price. So I bought on August the 12th, 2020 at $2.93. Share price went sideways for the next three months and the breakout of uh, South 32 was actually in November, so four months later. And then the share price moved up to about $3, $2.70 to $3. And then it went sideways between about May and September of last year. And I was actually thinking of selling out because the share price was consolidated, just going sideways. But then the share price broke out in September of last year and has just kept on climbing. A nice uptrend, not a very powerful uptrend because we've only seen the share price reach it once, but the share price just keeps on increasing for this company. And I'm just going to keep holding this company as long as this uptrend is intact. So almost doubled my money with South 32. And you have to be happy if you double your money in about 20 months for holding a mining company, particularly when a lot of people just don't like holding mining companies because they are price takers. So I am showing you that you can make money out of mining companies if you do trade them. I don't think South 32 is a long-term trade. And when I say long-term, I'm talking about five to 10 years, but maybe it could be a two to three year tra trade a holding. And when the sentiment in this company starts to shift around, when commodity prices start to fall, that's when you take it, take out your position. That's when you sell out of, out of your position in the company. John's Lynn Group is without doubt the most expensive company in my portfolio. And when I decided to take a position in this company on June 10th, 2021, I wasn't looking at the valuation of the company. I was just making a trade, potentially a short-term trade, because I did see the share price pull back on a little bit of a dip. So this was a buy the dip situation. Share price moved just below the 50-day moving average, then pulled above it, above it the next day. And then sort of the move below the moving average was the trigger for me to closely follow the share price of this company. And when the share price moved back above the 50-day moving average, it sort of confirmed that buy the dip scenario. So it took a position at $5.10 and the share price has just kept on increasing. So even though this company has, well, we'll say it is expensive, I think there are reasons behind it. This company is growing quickly. They've made a really strategic acquisition in the United States. And I think that will be a successful acquisition. And the other thing we have to take into account, even though what's happened in the floods in Lisbon and other areas of the east coast of Australia, it is an unfortunate circumstances. There will be companies that will benefit from that flooding. And John's Lynn Group is one of those companies. And I'm not sure the market is fully realizing that right now. But share price of this company is still in a well-defined uptrend. It looked a little bit dicey, about two months ago, share price did move below the 100-day moving average briefly. So I was paying close attention at that point in time. But we have seen share price move from $7 to current share price of $8.68 in the last month or so. So share price is moving up. I'd like to see it to get to about $10, an all-time high. The all-time high share price for this company is around about $9.22. So we're not far off the all-time high right now. So I'm still fairly bullish about John's Ling Group for the future. I think increasing profitability. And even though this is an expensive company, sometimes you do have to pay for quality. This is one of those companies. And this is the company, or one of the companies I hope to hold 
for the long term. I'm talking about five to 10 years. And there is a possibility if things go right for this company, if management keep on succeeding in what they're doing, this will be a long-term holding for me. The final company I want to feature in this video is Pack Gold. This is a small cap gold mining company with projects in the Cape York Peninsula. My cap is really low for the potential of this company in my opinion. And it didn't look like the market agreed with me for a while. Now, it only listed on the ASX in the middle or towards the end of 2021. But um, some good news from the company, particularly on January the 12th, which did see the share price rise quite a bit. I took a position the following day at 80.5 cents. I was probably a little bit too eager taking a position at that point in time because we have seen share price pull back over the past two and a half months. But the good thing about the pullback in the share price is that the, the uptrend is still intact. There is still an uptrend, which is portrayed by the dashed uh, line, upward sloping line. The other thing is we've seen a decreasing volume since the January 12 and 13. We saw massive volume on those two days and then decreasing volume. Whenever you see a share price pullback, on decreasing volume. That is a healthy sign that there's not a lot of sellers out there. Probably the other negative thing about Pack Gold is just the liquidity of its trading. So not a lot of trades in this company. And sometimes when someone wants to sell out, they'll sell at the market price. And that could lead to a share price decreasing by a fair bit in the one trade. On the flip side, if someone wants to buy in at market, you can see the share price rising quite significantly in the one day. So there is a little bit of volatility in the share price action of Pack Gold. So I would like to see some higher volume coming in. That would show me the market is excited about the company. And the best way you get increased excitement about a company is positive announcements. That's what I want to see from Gap Pack Gold moving forward. So even though the share price is a little bit lower from when I bought in, about 10% lower, I'm not all that worried yet simply because the uptrend is still intact. If I see the uptrend broken and a downtrend starting to develop, that's when I might sell out of my position in Pack Gold. And I would be risking the possibility the company releases some good news and that could trigger a share price increasing by 30, 40, even 50% in the future. So I'd have to take that risk. But at this point in time, closely following Pack Gold's share price, simply because it's just above the uptrend. And if I do see some problems with the share price moving forward, I might take uh, or sell out my position in this company. That's all I have for this video on assessing my trades. I featured six companies in this video. If you do want uh, any questions, or if you have any questions, or if you have any thoughts about these six companies, if you think I've made a huge mistake, I'd love to hear your opinion. That's how I learn. Just reading, listening to other people's opinions, and then taking that on board and potentially changing my mind in the future. I think is this is something lacking in humanity right now. Our inability to listen to other people and be open-minded enough to change our opinion. I love that to change. People are too stubborn and hard-headed when it comes to their opinions. So I think it's very important to be able to adjust your opinions, particularly if you hear someone else having a different opinion and rant. So if you don't have any questions, thoughts, just leave in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.